Hey guys, this is Afro Blue. Now we finally get to make our return to Arkham City for the much anticipated Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC. We've been teased Robin, we've been teased a new chapter, and we've been teased an epic epilogue to the whole game. Has it delivered? Let's find out. Taking place a few weeks if after the dramatic cover, ending of Arkham City, Harley Quinn's there. Revenge yeah. allows you to take control of Robin, Harley the boy Quinn. wonder. Batman is missing after trying to save some cops from an unstable Quinn, the stakes are as high as detention, and no one knows what the madwoman is capable of. Control switches between Batman and his sidekick throughout the DLC episode, and also jumps back and forth through time, starting us in Act 2 of the story and revealing Act 1 as we progress. Batman himself controls in exactly the same manner as he did in the main game, and will also have his full arsenal of gadgets. Nothing new to report there. Robin, on the other hand, comes equipped with a slightly different skill set for what was promised to be a unique playstyle. What he actually brings to the table are slight variations of some of the Bat's gadgets, as well as his own shield and snap flash. The shield will allow you to approach armed goons in narrow corridors without being filled with lead, as well as allow you to pass the jets of steam. The issue with using it to approach henchmen is that you also have a remote control shuriken, which you can simply throw around the corner ahead of time, knocking the henchmen out and allowing you to run on past. There are also very few instances where you will actually need to make use of this particular gadget as well. The snap flash is even more underutilized. It's designed to knock an enemy out, but there is really only one section where you're going to require its use. It's sad that a new gadget unique to Robin gets almost no limelight and really fails to make an impression. Robin does have a unique gimmick for crossing large gaps in what's essentially his back war variant, but again it makes too few appearances. Having a more limited range of gadgets severely narrows your options during stealthy engagements with Quinn's men. It may be that Bruce doesn't trust him with all of his toys yet, but Robin feels incomplete as a playable character at these points, with frustration ensuing. With regards to combat, our red hero fights with the same weight and speed of his mentor. Fighting as Robin has the same rhythm and flow as fighting as the Dark Knight, and foes will fall just as quickly. I understand this is necessary to allow a certain cohesion to the gameplay, especially when switching between two playable characters, but in battle they feel so similar there barely seems a point to having them be separate characters in the first place. Let's compare this directly to the Catwoman DLC. Catwoman had her own way of navigating the landscapes of Arkham City. She had a very different fighting style in that she focused on speed as opposed to brute force. She came with a limited set of gadgets, but they were all unique to her, and she had an uncanny ability to hang from ceilings. When going back to playing as Batman, you didn't need an adjustment period, you could happily flip back and forth between the two. The length of this DLC is another issue. You'll have this beaten on your first run in less than two hours. It is an episode in every sense. The DLC also has a habit of recycling assets, too. You will traverse the exact same steel mill you've already seen in the main game, and while the majority of the content takes place in an all-new arena, it is a very small area. You will quickly notice that you're visiting the same four or five rooms multiple times, running back and forth as Rocksteady tries to squeeze every second it can out of the disappointingly confined complex you find yourself in. Harley's base of operations also does nothing to distinguish itself from the rest of Arkham City. It retains the same aesthetic and matches the rest of the game perfectly, which prevents it from standing out or being the least bit memorable. Apart from a steel monument to Joker, there's really nothing to give the space any identity or flavour. Within these rooms, you'll find yourself in all too familiar scenarios against the exact same thug archetypes you've already gotten used to fighting. There are the normal mooks, guys with blades, guys with shock batons, guys with shields, and of course a titan. Yes, they have new clothes, but really it's just a texture edit on existing joker thugs, and there's nothing new or exciting to be seen. 
On the plus side, the experience does take some inspiration from the more linear Arkham Asylum, with clear objectives and a steady pace. There are some segments that feel like padding, such as finding and interrogating free guards for their passcodes, or defusing free bombs, but you always know you're making progress and you're on the right track. The main reason most fans are eager to play this is for the plot. How will Harley Quinn react to the ending of Arkham City, and what shocking new revelations are we going to see? For someone who's been through quite a, well, trauma, Harley Quinn shows no sign of change. Psychologically, she seems fine, and her personality hasn't changed one bit. I was hoping for an angry, desperate, and more dangerous Quinn. I didn't get it. As for major developments in the plot and more hints towards the next game, there really aren't any. At least, certainly nothing that would warrant purchasing this DLC for. To compare to the Catwoman DLC again, we got several brand new areas and valuable insight into the workings and goings on within the facility. It was genuinely interesting and worth the time invested. I'm hoping this isn't a sign of things to come, that Rocksteady haven't run out of steam just yet. Arkham Asylum is easily one of my top 10 games of all time, and while City didn't sing to the same tune, it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience that brought some new and interesting mechanics to the table. I need to see that again. I need the developers to prove they're going to have something truly exciting to show me for the next installment of the franchise now. So there we have it. Unfortunately, this is ultimately a disappointing offering. Really, it's quite a short DLC and promised a hell of a lot more than it actually delivered. If you're a Batman fan and you just have to have that little bit extra of Arkham City, if you want to use Robin outside of those challenge rooms, go ahead and pick this up, but it's not worth 800 Microsoft points. Really, I would suggest waiting for this to drop in price down to, say, 400 points, or wait for the Game of the Year Edition version to hit the UK and pick that up instead, because that will have all of the DLC thus far included, along with Harley's Revenge. Thank you very much for watching, and this has been Afro Blue.